who is ready to Pokemon go to the polls? Are you ready? You better be. Don't give them ideas, Democracy's Alex. at stake. You've, you've just given the Democrats their latest campaign slogan. Um, That's right. You know, probably with like the Pikachu branding or something. Yeah. I hate these people. I hate them. <laughs> the Democrats. <laughs> yes. What have the Democrats ever done to you? What haven't they done to me? Jesus yeah. Christ. I mean, well, yeah. They so, did bomb I mean, the well, country we're in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there's, there's that. Yeah. Have to live with that. But yeah, I mean, it, it, you may have heard, ladies and gentlemen, and we're sorry to say this, but there is a US election going on. Um, oh. I mean, thankfully, thankfully, it, it, it hasn't really been in the news very much, actually, because, you know, there's a genocide going on. There's all sorts of other stuff that's like actually way more important. And as we'll get into um, in due course, um, yeah, uh, the stakes are pretty low. I mean, going into 2016, um, there was this whole I mean, already there was the Trump is working with the Russians narrative and there was all sorts of um, yeah, Hillary Clinton being investigated by the FBI uh, for the use of her email server. Um, and yeah, there was uh, there was a lot of fun and frolics and some really entertaining debates where, of course, there was that fantastic moment where Hillary Clinton said, well, isn't it isn't it a miracle that Trump is not in charge of criminal justice in the United States, to which Trump responded, you'd be in jail, uh, which remains one of the finest moments in US political history ever. Um, in 2020, there was this kind of like this is this grand battle for civilization to try and wrest the government away from 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 Trump's tyranny and, and blah, blah, blah. Are, and you know, will he try and steal the election and all this other stuff? Um, actually, this has been a dog that didn't really bark. Um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 I think that it's it's in a sense, it's a reflection of the fact that, like, a um, there's not really very much in it, um, to a large extent. It's also a reflection of the fact that Kamala is just this hilariously bad um candidate who's just not connecting with anyone, but also it the, the media is so polarized now that. I mean, even stuff like Trump nearly getting killed twice. Uh, the first time, like, was literally within millimeters of having his face blown off. And the only people who give a shit are his supporters. Everyone else has just forgotten about it and moved on. Like, we're at that level of polarization where, like, that become you know, the attempted assassination, probably the closest, I think, since, was it was it Reagan? Who got shot? Yeah, Reagan yeah. got shot. Um, and then like nearly died and had to be operated on. Um, you know, the closest we've come to a presidential assassination and we're kind of overdue one in US history, I think, at this point, um, that that that's just been completely fallen by the wayside, you know, as if it's irrelevant. Yeah. I mean, on paper, this is a fascinating historical election cycle. You had yes. a coup in the Democratic Party. You had that disastrous debate that preceded it. You had yeah. Trump's mugshot. You had Trump shot shot. Um, but it, to me, <laughs> feels very un – I mean, and and now what's what's the big story this past week? Um, a comedian made some bad jokes. Um, so it's, it's really underwhelming. I'm quite bored with it. Um, fortunately enough, mm. there hasn't been a – uh, a, a tidal wave of, of coverage. But yeah, I mean, you were talking about 2016. 2016 had uh, Benghazi as a main issue. Uh, you had DNC employees getting gunned down in the streets of DC. You had pizza restaurants getting shot up. Um, it, it was, it was, I mean, you the had Halcyon, narratives the about days. satanic pedophile rings, elite satanic oh. pedophile rings. And it's just none of it, none of it really sticks anymore. And I think that a big reason for that is the Democrats messaging because um, their, their selling point for so long was we're not Trump and you can, with the adults uh, in the room, you can tune it, uh, turn off, drop out. What's that hippie saying? I, f I forget the exact uh, phrase. Oh, oh, but... oh, oh, like, ch ch uh, yeah, like, Oh, I can't remember it. Now. Well, you, you our, our people will you comment, comment in the, in the live what it is but that was that's oh, the that was, point that was timothy that was timothy that was timothy leary the lsd dude who said yeah, yeah. turn on tune, turn on tune in and drop out yeah um, and so i mean the idea was that you know you wouldn't have to uh have your eyes glued to the uh tv screen watching uh cable news if we elected democrats and i think people kind of realized that like oh hey there is another way of avoiding this chaos that isn't you know, not electing Donald Trump, and that's turning off the TV. And you've seen that um, alternative media has uh, blown up 
in this time. Um, and ratings on mainstream cable news have plummeted. So kind, I think kind. I think people are really uh, the, the 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 whole thing about like d democracy being at risk. It doesn't work so well when the guy they're warning of is has already been president. Um, I mean, Kamala was was never given the focus group testing that a normal candidate for in a general election would get. And I think we're seeing the consequences of that, which is just um, an overall amount of disinterest. And you had this New York Times article that uh, you spotted from Maureen yeah. Dowd, who uh, was a uh, was a, a villain in the um, in previous election cycles because she was a major proponent of the um, Bernie Bros. Uh, narrative, which was this idea that yeah. um, Bernie Sanders supporters, people who you know were um, mostly interested in like <laughs> free health care and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and 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 housing affordability, were these like raging mm -hmm. sexist, just like just like misogynist, you know, admonishing. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but this is her. This is her piece, and uh, you. I mean, you you can take the floor on this. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I just think that a um, uh, like a Maureen for once is actually kind of on the money here because it's really funny because we have, as you say, we have been told there has been a lot of if you don't vote for Kamala Harris, then the Nazis are coming back. You know, I mean, like, you know, they're getting the band back together. Um, and then it, you know, it starts off by noting that Barack Obama got blunt in Pittsburgh on Thursday. He chided black men who are not supporting Kamala Harris, saying that some of the brothers were just not feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And it's like, yeah, that like, I mean, this is completely correct. Um, it, it, this is one of the ways that the Democrats have attempted to shame people um, into voting for Kamala Harris, despite, every, despite everything. Um, and people don't care. They don't care. And I think that, that there's a, a forgotten nugget from the 2020 election, which I, I, I keep coming back to this um, in, in just because I think that it's something that it, a lot of people miss, which is one of the reasons that Biden won on top of election fortification by by various centrist mainstream um, institutions and individuals was the fact that he managed to get the left on side because the squad and other ostensible members of the left within the Democratic Party, they stated, well, we get Biden elected, then we'll make his life hell and we'll push him to the left. And he's going to come in and he's going to be like this crusading an FDR style. There was that political, no, no, sorry, The Hill stated, is Biden Superman or Clark Kent? And the whole thing was that like, well, he's just going to come in and he's just going to, he, he's, he's going to push all of this stuff. And we're going to like, we're going to force him to be as left wing as possible. And he's going to pass all of this stimulus all this infrastructure legislation and then it never happened and fast forward six months into his god-awful presidency biden's god-awful presidency and aoc's like well i think he's doing a wonderful job for americans and like so you know i think that this is after you know as i say in 2016 um there was a large number of people who supported bernie who were angry that he got literally screwed out of the uh, nomination due to Clintonian DNC machinations who did vote for Hillary because you're know, at but with like yeah a clothes peg on their nose and then they did the same again in 2020 these people are not going to back Kamala Harris now particularly given her start as we'll get into her ever shifting stances on key issues particularly the the, the Gaza genocide and like people don't care like they don't feel there are any there are any stakes here, and actually, I think that that there is a, a significant proportion of people who feel um, le legitimately and justifiably that their lives were better under Trump. Um, so, I mean, whether that translates to them voting for Trump or staying at home, we don't know yet. Um, I mean, we shall we we shall see. But yeah, the, the, the stakes just aren't there, and I think it's really interesting that this is Maureen Dowd, who, as you say, is this kind of mainstream hatchet woman who was all in on on getting Clinton and then and then Biden elected. She kind of acknowledges that like that that that, that Kamala is so without in not so many words Kamala is such a bad candidate like she's so she doesn't connect with anyone she does these really embarrassing interviews she's offering people nothing that there's no beyond the shaming and and bombastic pronouncements of democratic party apparatchik there is like zero public uh appetite let alone kind of eagerness for her to beat trump people are just like well so what yeah it doesn't matter 
Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, there's uh, nothing really of substance, and you know, there's been and there's an article I'm going to pull up on on this topic in a mm. bit. But there's there's been this mantra in like um, electoral circles, people that work on yes. political campaigns that uh foreign policy is kind of like irrelevant to the electorate and there's yeah. i mean and it's always been kind of like a a, a paradox because of uh, the one issue the one realm that the u.s president has the most power is in foreign policy so that mm -hmm. that's the most consequential part of the job yet it's the part that people care about the least has always been this kind of paradox um i don't think that's true anymore particularly with uh, the war in Ukraine and Gaza, because you have, uh, you know, the Trump space um, who are quite fed up with these billions upon billions going to uh, Ukraine, a government which is, you know, notoriously corrupt. And then you have the Democratic base, which is um, and a lot of young people very disturbed by what they see when they wake up every day and log into Instagram or Twitter, or I mean, not so much Facebook anymore, but, uh, and, and people are kind of sick of looking at the dead babies. So, um, I, I don't think that it will be surprising when we see that, uh, young people have not mobilized for the democratic mm -hmm. party as they have in previous election cycles. Um, but you let, let's talk about this foreign affairs article and then I'll go into some yeah. of the other stories yeah, that we sure. have. Well, it's, uh, I mean, I think, I think, I think that this is just, this really struck me. It was just like, it, 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 there have been several moments in this election where the mainstream has said the quiet part out loud. Now, in respect to Kamala, there was this, she gave a speech and again, we'll get into this. Um, she gave a speech where she said, um, well, um, of course, I have sympathy with the Palestinians and I want the bloodshed to stop. And then very quickly, her campaign issued a statement saying Kamala's statements about her sympathy for the Palestinians should not be reflective of any change in government policy on Israel. And it's just like it's gotten to the point now where it's just like it, 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 that such is the, the level of the level of tyranny, casual tyranny is what it is that like politicians can literally in in a speech say one thing and then immediately deny it afterwards just like w without any fear of consequence because what they say is meaningless and people know that now this foreign affairs article it had a, an astonishing it was an it was a it's a op-ed by anthony blinken the dreaded where he says um Although the party in power in Washington can change, the pillars, pillars of U.S. foreign policy will not. And it's all about the importance of ensuring that irrespective of who's in power, what party they belong to and, and who they are as a person, um, put based on personality or ideology or whatever, if these things even exist at this point, um, that, yeah, that nothing will change. They're openly stating that whoever you vote for, you will get the same. And yeah. it's like, I mean, it's just quite, it's quite, it's quite astonishing. But not only that, this is being framed as like a good thing. Right. It's like vote, vote Democrat, you're getting you more Ukraine proxy war, vote Republican, you'll get the same. Right. And and, and the fact that like the, the fact that the, the fact that, yeah, that I mean, there's no wonder that that appeals to um, uh, left wingers to vote for Kamala because, hey, this is your this is your last chance to stop the uh, eruption of fascism in, in America. But it's like, well, you're openly stating that, not, that, that nothing's going to happen anyway. So, yeah. I mean, like, you know, where, like, how you, how can you summon any enthusiasm in this instance? And I I am. Um, I have, I have, see, I mean, there are some people, but I mean, I think the kind of hardcore Democrats who I've seen them online where they openly stay, well, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, she's, she's, she's pro genocide, um, but at least she's not Trump. Yeah. So that, that is the argument. Like, that's the argument. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that there is an argument to be made, and we'll talk more about this in a bit. That 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 Trump wouldn't necessarily be better on uh, Israel, but I I want to I want to. There's an article in Foreign Policy. It's a I, I think it's a yeah. transcript of one of their op eds. Yes. Um, that kind of touches on this question of of uh, transition that Blinken uh, was writing about and. And these, this article is uh, this podcast is by uh, two think tankers. Basically, one is mm. uh, a columnist at Foreign Policy and a senior fellow at the Reimagining U.S. Grand Strategy Program at the Stinson Center. 
So, I mean, you know, they always have those like long titles, senior non-resident yeah. uh, fellow in the adjunct. pocket, you know? Yeah. Adjunct. Adjunct. Right. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, um, no, I mean, it's, um, the, the, I mean, it's, it's like, it, it, it is like they are old people's homes. It's like all, yeah. you know, all of these senior fellows, <laughs> um, you know, but uh, yeah, anyway, sorry. Go and ahead. the, and the other, the other ones uh, at the Atlantic council is a senior director at the Skullcroft oh, center, whatever. Ugh. Um, But they're talking about, <laughs> They're talking here about, and I'm going to, there's another part of this too that I want to get into, but, um, and thank goodness the United States is democracy is a democracy. So our leaders change every four or eight years. Would it be preferable for the United States to have a dictator to provide other countries more continent continuity? Now oh. you're just trying to provoke me. Of course not. Though I worry sometimes that folks who work on foreign policy in Washington are uncomfortably close to advocating for something exactly like that with the way they talk about the problems with congressional debates or shift shifts between administrations. And that this hyperlink here uh, links to the uh, Center for New American Security, which is like another Democrat-aligned foreign policy think tank. So they're like subtweeting in their articles <laughs> – their colleagues that are like basically advocating for dictatorship to give other countries around the world more continuity in U.S. Just to reassure foreign them. policy. Just to, reassure, right. just to reassure them. Like, I mean, you know, they, they deserve that at the very least. But yeah. But I, I mean, wanted to. It, it, uh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, I was just going well, to say wanted that's the thing. That, yeah. that the thing is that, you were, that that's what they are literally advocating. If you were saying, well, irrespective of who you are voting for, that like nothing will change. Well, you are advocating for dictatorship. You are. Yeah. Like it's just, deep, it, deep state dictatorship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but th th this was this was kind of interesting. Uh, there's this admission in this article. Again, these are like think tankers. Like these are swamp creatures. Uh, you know, the 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 very people that you know have been. That that do experience that continuity, they don't lose their jobs yeah. with the change of an administration. They 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 continue to draft the foreign policy that we've seen for the past twenty years. But there's this admission, and it's in the lead. It says these parties, the parties seem to be realigning on questions of war and peace, but it's not clear how consequential the results will be for anxious allies in Europe and Asia. And there's this paragraph here. Finally, I want to ask a really big question: Are the parties realigning when it comes to U.S. foreign policy? We have Harris out on the stump with Liz Cheney getting endorsements from Republican foreign policy pundits like Robert Kagan and Bill Kristol and making a case for the United States' role in the world that sounds a heck of a lot closer to George W. Bush than it does to Barack Obama. Meanwhile, Trump's campaign is issuing warnings about Democrats getting us into World War III and has Tulsi Gabbard and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as key campaign surrogates. And we'll talk about later in the show how uh, – there's been I, I I lost one of the links, but I, I have a link in the show where um, they're reviving the term weapons of mass destruction, this time in particular yeah. uh, on North Korea. Um, so we have this. I mean, weapons of mass destruction, it doesn't get more on the nose than that, um, yeah. particularly yeah. on North Korea. Now that uh, they are allegedly involved in the Democrats proxy war in Ukraine. Um, but I do want to play because I think this, I mean, when, when CNN catches something like this, you know, that you're cooked, your campaign is cooked. Mm. Um, CNN catches the Kamala Harris campaign targeting Jews in Pennsylvania and Muslims in Michigan with two completely opposite stances on Gaza. So I'm just going to go ahead and play this video if you don't mind. Yeah. Tonight, mixed messages. A K-file investigation this hour finds Kamala Harris is targeting crucial battleground voters with vastly different messages on Gaza and Israel. This ad is running in Michigan, which has the largest Arab population in America. What has happened in Gaza over the past nine months is devastating. We cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering, and I will not be silent. All right, well... It's a very different story for an ad in Pennsylvania targeting Jewish voters. Let me be clear. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself. And I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself because the people of Israel must never again face the horror 
that a terrorist organization called Hamas caused on October 7th. Different message. Andrew Kaczynski is out front now. So, Andrew, those obviously do sound um, starkly different, to say the least. <laughs> Tell me more about what you found. Yeah, that's right. And there's they're, a bit, they're a bit different. Uh, Just a bit. The line that the Harris campaign is trying to walk here in the closing weeks, closing days of this campaign on uh, the issue of Israel. Here you have two entirely different constituencies, and they are getting two entirely different messages. There are often uh, times these constituencies have very opposing views on this. If you are a Jewish person in Pennsylvania, you saw that ad that you're getting. Uh, you are getting that ad that talks about how strong uh, strong she is in Israel. If you're a Muslim voter in Michigan, you are getting that ad uh, on Facebook. It gets better. Talking about, um, talking about how she won't be silent on the issue of Gaza. Now, what's really interesting here is that ad uh, that we that we just played, the one that's going to uh, Jewish voters in Pennsylvania. Now, it sort of sounds like those two clips of her talking about Israel uh, are together, but they actually cut part of it out. Take a listen to what they cut. What has happened in Gaza over the past 10 months is devastating. President Biden and I are working to end this war such that Israel is secure, the hostages are released, the suffering in Gaza ends, and the Palestinian people can realize their right to dignity, security, freedom, and self-determination. And you've seen, too, that she, uh, will, they obviously, they cut out that portion of the ad where they talked about Gaza from uh, her DNC speech, those two ports were um, together. They sliced them. They cut that part out. Now, look, she's also getting hammered a lot on this issue by Republicans. We talked just a couple days ago about how those robocalls were airing in Wisconsin that are made to sound like they're in support of Jill Stein talking about her position on Gaza, saying that uh, they're highlighting her pro-Israel position, uh, and it's, they're sort of trying to siphon those votes away from her. So this is a really delicate issue for her. Oh, it certainly is. I mean, the Palestinian people can realize their right to dignity, security, freedom, and self-determination are being cut out. Um, it's in, in, important to notice that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you believe it? It's oh. it's it's such uh, hypocrisy. And, you know, this is happening in the context of a national election, and people are uh, following it at a national level. So... I mean, whatever benefits that might have in Pennsylvania or Michigan, uh, people are seeing that they're liars. I mean, anyone who watched the CNN clip, it's clear as day. So, yeah. well, it's fu it's funny because I mean, as um, we, we should get into, I think that like the, the, the it, it, in effect, um, we actually saw um, uh, similar approaches by um, the uh, Keir Starmer and his Labour Party, where they would tell one audience one thing. And I mean, Keir Starmer himself was elected by um, by token of just lying um, and claiming that, oh, well, that uh, well, I'm going to keep Jeremy Corbyn's kind of radical, for, in UK terms, social democratic platform. And then they, his campaign was briefing journalists that, oh, no, we're just, we're, this is completely false. We're going to drop everything. Um, and then, you know, they've they have since entering office um, implemented all manner of things, including cuts to the winter fuel allowance, which is like, you know, ensuring that pensioners don't freeze to death um, and giving them a, some, some kind of stimulus to, so they can afford their energy bills. Tens of thousands of people die in the UK every year for, because they can't they can't afford heating um, every winter. And it's like. They, 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 they were slamming the Tories doing this, or the Conservatives, I mean, doing this and saying, that, oh, we've spoken to people who were terrified that the Conservatives are going to slash their fuel allowance. And then they just went ahead and did it anyway. Um, and yeah. likewise, um, they, they have, upon taking office, were billed as, oh, well, thank God the adults are back in charge. Everything is boring now, and that's really good. Um, and they've just been absolutely dreadful. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.